Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how the new Corvette is going to achieve its fastest 0 to 60 ever. And you might be wondering, wait a minute Jason, what about the 2019 Corvette ZR1 which Chevy claims to have a 0 to 60 of 2.95 seconds and in fact Motor Trend has tested that at 3.0 seconds. So perhaps the current 2019 Corvette ZR1 is currently the fastest Corvette from 0 to 60. However, it's maxing out its potential, whereas the new Corvette in base version with the Z51 package is able to achieve a 0 to 60 of under 3 seconds, and that's the base version. We're certainly going to have additional variants in the future, which will be faster thanks to relocating that engine. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how simply moving the engine from the front towards the back is going to enable this vehicle to achieve a faster 0 to 60 time than the current generation Corvette and what 0 to 60 time we might be able to expect from future variants of the Corvette. Now, of course, the engine's location alone is not enough to have something accelerate from 0 to 60 very quickly. One of the elements you, of course, need is power. So this has a 6.2 liter V8 engine producing 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque with the performance exhaust. Great, it has horsepower. Step number one is complete. Next, we need a quick transmission. So for the first time in the Corvette's history, it has an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. There is no manual offered. Very sad. However, this dual-clutch transmission does help improve the Corvette's 0-60 to time. So first of all, it has very aggressive gearing. So Chevy states that first gear is used for launching. It's a really aggressive first gear ratio. And then gears 2 through 6 are close ratio. So when you're on a track, you can keep that peak RPM, keep it within the power band, put down lots of torque, and then gears 7 and 8 give you the flexibility of dropping that RPM really low while you're cruising around on the highway to help improve fuel economy. So aggressive gearing to help accelerate quickly, you have constant torque because this is a dual clutch transmission. So your even gears are on one shaft, your odd gears are on another shaft, and when you switch gears, you're actually closing one clutch while you're simultaneously opening the other. And by doing so, you never actually have negative torque or zero torque. You actually always have positive torque being applied. So you can be applying to both two and three at the same time as you're switching gears uh, as a result of the layout of this dual clutch transmission. So you've always got positive torque as you're accelerating up to zero to 60, which of course is a benefit and of course much quicker than a manual transmission. And these shifts happen in less than 100 milliseconds. So a quick dual clutch transmission, aggressive gearing, all the torque, you get up to 60 miles per hour very quickly. Great. Now, I hope you didn't think you could get through an entire engineering explained video without me talking about tires. So tires are, of course, very important in achieving a quick 0 to 60 time, especially if you are only driving two of the wheels on your car. And so here we have on the Z51, it has Michelin PS4S tires, uh, the successor to the previous Pilot Super Sports, which were on the Corvette up in the front, 245s in the rear, the important ones for driving this vehicle, 305 millimeter wide PS4S tires, so a big fat tire there in the rear to help accelerate our car. And one of the really cool things about the Corvette is it has one of the best braking distances out there. Motor Trend uh, tested the previous generation and was able to get a 60 mile per hour to zero distance of just 90 feet, and that was using those previous tires, the Pilot Super Sports. Now, not everyone's crazy about math, I get that. Uh, so I wrote some numbers here on the board, but we can kind of gloss over them and just pretend that we don't have to go through all the crazy math. If you like the equations, there they are. If you don't like the equations, we can learn from this brake distance of 90 feet that the Corvette is able to stop uh, with an acceleration of 1.336 Gs, which means the frictional coefficient, I'm sure that's what everyone was very curious about, of these tires is 1.336. Okay, why do we care about the frictional coefficient? Well, we have our friendly equation, force equals frictional coefficient multiplied by normal force. And what this tells us is the maximum force that a vehicle will be able to accelerate with is equal to the frictional coefficient of the tires, in this case, the 1.336, multiplied by the normal force, the weight that you've got coming down on those tires. And so the more weight you can place on those tires relative to the total weight of the vehicle itself, the faster you're able to accelerate with. Of course, the weight that's on those front wheels isn't doing us any good because those front wheels are not driven. So we want all of the weight on the car on those back tires if we can do it in order to have the maximum potential acceleration possible. 
So perhaps now you've had your aha moment as far as why Chevy has decided to move that engine towards the back. Now the question we need to answer is, what is the maximum potential acceleration for each of the two configurations? The new 2020 Corvette configuration versus the previous generation Corvette configuration. And in order to find this out, we need to do a little bit of math. I know you're just as excited as I am. That's not true, I'm more excited than you are. Either way, let's look at some quick numbers here. So, for the 2018 Corvette, it had a 50-50 weight distribution. Great, we need to know that. In an interview with Auto Week, the Corvette's executive chief engineer said that it had about 60% of the weight on the rear tires, so a 40-60 split for the new Corvette. The center of gravity car and driver measured at 17.5 inches, or about 445 millimeters off the ground uh, for the previous generation. We don't know what that is for the new generation, so we're just going to use the same number as the last generation to keep things uh, even. We need to also know our wheelbase, which was 2710 millimeters for the previous generation, and just 12 millimeters longer for the current generation. Now, with this information, we can fill out these little fun diagrams here. And so basically all we're looking at is the vehicle's wheelbase, the center of gravity's height, and then where that center of gravity falls within that wheelbase. And so with those numbers, uh, and using our little reference right here, we can fill out this formula for maximum acceleration Gs. Now, if you want to know where this comes from, I have a separate video covering this in much more detail, which I will include in the video description. So in this video, we're just going to skip right along. So if we fill out this equation right here and our frictional coefficient, we're just going to use 1.3, a little bit less than our max right here, which we measured previously, but we're just going to give a little bit of a conservative estimate and say 1.3. 1.3 is a very high frictional coefficient either way. So we can fill out these numbers for our two individual cases. And so with our first case, with the 2018, here we have uh, the example for the 2020. The first one with the 2018, we're going to have a maximum acceleration of 0.826 Gs. Now, we know that velocity equals acceleration times time. And so because we know what our acceleration is and we know what we want our velocity to be, 60 miles per hour, we can solve for time. And time is then going to be equal to 3.31 seconds. So that is the maximum potential, 3.31 seconds, for the previous generation base Corvette to accelerate to 60 miles per hour based on where that engine lies in its weight distribution and its center of gravity height. Okay, so what about the next generation in Corvette? What's its maximum potential acceleration? And remember, all we're really doing here, the wheelbase is about the same, we're assuming the center of gravity is the same, all we're really doing here is just moving that engine back and shifting the weight from a 50-50 balance to a 40-60 balance. And simply by doing that, we do this little math equation right here, fill out those numbers, and we get a maximum peak acceleration of 0.99 Gs, meaning a potential zero to 60 of 2.76 seconds. Now, I don't think the base Corvette is going to hit zero to 60 in 2.76 seconds. I don't think it has the power for it, but that would be the potential if you were to increase the power on this engine, you could potentially get a zero to 60 time as low as 2.76 seconds, which as you can see is significantly higher than the previous Corvette's potential. Okay, so now you're frustrated. You're thinking, Jason, your math is wrong. If the maximum potential of the previous Corvette is a 0 to 60 and 3.31, how in the world are they getting 3.0 with Motor Trend's 0 to 60 time? Well, two things here. First of all, we're looking at true 0 to 60. We're not worrying about that rollout nonsense that all the magazines do, including Motor Trend. Sorry, Motor Trend, but you know, we should all use real 0 to 60s, not the one foot of rollout. The second part of that is this ZR1 has uh, much grippier tires, so it's got Michelin Cup 2s on it, which will help increase that frictional coefficient, which will help reduce that 0 to 60 time. And then the third thing uh, we need to think about here is the ZR1 could potentially have a slightly higher center of gravity. You've got that uh, supercharger that you're putting on it, and so if you do slightly raise that center of gravity, that's going to allow more weight transfer to those rear wheels under acceleration, which will allow it to accelerate faster. So we are able to get a, you know, slightly quicker than this th theoretical 3.31, not by a whole lot, especially once you consider rollout. And think about this. This is a car that starts at $122,000, and we're comparing it to a car that starts at $60,000, and they're basically going to have pretty much the same zero to 60 time. 
That is amazing. That's extremely cool. And they're doing it, you know, simply by moving this engine back. Physics is very cool. You move an engine, you change the weight balance, and as a result, you can get a much quicker zero to 60 time. Now, the fun doesn't end there. I want to make a prediction because I think we're going to see a better zero to 60 time than 2.76 seconds. So as mentioned, this is going to be on the Michelin PS4S tires rather than the previous uh, Pilot Super Sport tires. And so I think we're going to be able to improve the friction coefficient on these tires I think it's potential that you know with the ZR1 or the Z06 we could be seeing grip levels uh, at 1.4 for the frictional coefficient perhaps using cup 2 tires and you know perhaps a slightly different center of gravity height so if we assume we're able to get a frictional coefficient in the 1.4 region we have a maximum forward acceleration of 1.089 G's a 0 to 60, this is what my guess is going to be. Uh, the maximum potential for the ZR1 uh, is going to be 2.5 seconds, which would just be absolutely awesome if we were able to see a 2.5 second Corvette. Uh, very cool. And the other thing here is the Corvette is one of the best braking vehicles out there already. Braking with an AK, not EAK. Uh, we're not going to talk about reliability here. One of the quickest decelerating vehicles out there. And as a result of moving that center of gravity back, one of the very cool things about it is you're going to have a more even weight distribution under heavy braking. And by having a more even weight distribution under heavy braking, you're able to have a slightly higher frictional coefficient on your tires because that weight is evenly distributed. So I think the new Corvette will be the best braking vehicle of all time as far as production cars. I think we're going to see the best stopping distances we've ever seen in a production car with the new 2020 Corvette. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but I do believe it will happen. Uh, and so we're going to see that of less than 90 feet. There are a few cars out there which are capable of less than 90 feet. Uh, Porsche GT3 or Porsche GT2 RS, I believe, did it in 87 feet. Uh, and I think we may be able to beat that with this 2020 Corvette, which is very cool. Something that's starting at just $60,000. So this thing is awesome. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to try one out. And it's just so cool that something, you know, this advanced, this powerful, this quick, uh, this well, you know, just, just well-designed, well-engineered product uh, is going to be available at such a reasonable price. Uh, the performance is hopefully going to be as insane as it seems on paper. I'm pumped about it. Let me know what you guys think about the new Corvette in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching.